Welcome to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting. It's the 13th of August, 2021. Remind everyone we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Be nice to each other. Um, agenda items that I've got for today include open action items. Java 11 is default in our Docker images. Let's make that clear, our Docker images. A Jenkins interoperability newsletter coming from CDF and a topic on Docker Agents overview that don't know when we'll be able to schedule it, but just as a topic. Are there any other topics we should add to the agenda? So Tim, thanks for joining. Here are the topics that I saw for today's agenda. So action items, Java 11, whoops, Java 11, uh, interop articles and Docker agents overview. Anything else you'd like to add? Nope. Well, have you got, so the Java switch over. So there's one thing about that the agent publishing's not working for, um, I think it's SSH agent and inbound agent, I think. Okay. So that needs needs additional work to bring hello. back. Oh, go ahead, Daniel. I just said hello. I didn't oh. notice the meeting started because I wasn't in audio. Thanks to Zoom. Oh, sorry. Uh, thanks. Thanks for appreciate your being here. Thanks very much. So, so we've got an issue then, Tim. You're noting with agent publishing for two, the two, two, the outbound and the inbound agents. Yeah, I merged changes to them a week or so ago and saw that no releases were published. And then I had a look and no updates had been done in about seven months, um, which I think coincided with the Docker Hub changes. And um, I think these were are on auto builds and auto builds has probably stopped working. Okay. so. Now, I assume that we can we can borrow from the techniques we're using in the controller, at least in some portion, to work on that? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so agent is working, and agent's more similar, but yeah. Oh, oh agent, agent is working, okay. Right. Agent, agents, agent looks like agent, someone moved agent to um, building on trusted. Okay, good. Um, I think Windows works in those repos. So the Windows ones is building on Trusted, but the Linux ones we're using Docker Hub builds. Okay, so that that we've got to change. Great. Yeah. All right. Any other topics before we get into walking working through the agenda? Nope. Okay, so I had the action item to open the JET pull request. It's been opened and uh, requesting comments. We're actually executing on this plan right now, even without it having been accepted as a draft. Uh, comments have been received from Tim Jacom and from Oleg Nanashev and from one other contributor. And I think the proposal is currently up to date with those comments. Um, I've still got the task to open a JEP for Docker operating system support. And this is, but we've got a code owners file now already. It's the, the JEP is basically use code owners and the concept. We have one in the controller repository, um, but it's not yet fully expanded to cover all the all of the images that we have. We had an action item on plugin installation manager docs. That PR is sitting idle now, and I'm gonna have to just pick it up and continue with it, but it will be. I expect multiple weeks before I can approach that. Um, next topic then is the hot one for me, at least Java 11 is default in all our Docker images. So the, the story there is 2.306 has added JDK 8 tags. So there is a latest dash JDK, latest dash JDK 8 so that people could switch to use it. It happens to be the same right now. It's an alias for latest. Next week, it will be an alias for, it will be separate from latest. And because latest will become Java 17.
or not 17. What did I just say? That was a terrible thing to say. Latest will be Java 11. Strike that. Seven, Java 11. Java 17 is completely off the map for now. Uh, agent images, we need to switch from 8 to 11. And the plan is to have that happen sometime during next week. It certainly won't be exactly on Tuesday. Uh, we definitely want it before the LTS release, August 25th. Uh, Tim, do you feel like there's risk or high worry about that, us fitting that in, given that we've got to rework the publishing process? Um, I would say that, well, it depends on whether someone's got time to get the agent ones sorted. Um, so the con controller ones are trivial, but the um, some of the agent ones. So Jenkins slash agent is, is using Docker bake, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but yeah, the other ones haven't been swapped over. Okay. And conceivably, we could switch the publishing without switching to Docker bake. Uh, but Docker bake certainly makes it faster, easier, smarter, and more consistent. Yeah, we could. The, the old scripts are very hard to understand, at least for me, not knowing them. Okay. Uh, and it's there's probably no just well i don't think there'll be any point in not doing it because the old ones unless unless you've got docker auto builds working so the only reason not to use bake would be if if you got the auto builds working again and stayed with that um because there's no scripts for the, those repos i would assume ah got it okay so switch switching to bake is the uh, is the most yeah. like I'm most assuming effective that, path yeah i'm assuming the tags were configured in the docker hub ui on those repos. Great, okay, thank you. All right, then we've got 2.303.1, August 25th, we'll add a JDK8 suffix tag and we'll switch to Java 11 as the, as the default in the Docker image. Any red flags there or concerns from anyone of, oh, something that we, we, we should not go forward with this right now, my plan is to go forward. Not a concern, but uh, this needs to be part of the upgrade guide and the change log. Um, and we would not uh, go there through the usual um, approach of looking at the core changes because it's packaging related. Right, very good point. And I've attempted to already put it into the upgrade guide and the, the change log. So, so that's out for review and would love to have more voices checking it. Let me put a link to that into the meeting notes. So it's, I didn't, well, no, I take it back. I didn't put it in the change log. I wasn't sure quite where to put it in the change log. So Daniel, maybe you can give me some hints there, but I definitely did put it as the first entry in the upgrade guide. I would consider it as a major feature on the top of the list or near the top. Okay. Um, it just needs to make clear, clear that this only applies to uh, the Docker packaging. It could be merged with the existing entry that I just saw about the admin monitor recommending running on Java 11. Ah, okay. All right, great. So I will, I will revise that pull request to include, include that. That's good. Okay. Mark, revise the pull request to include it in the, uh, in the change log. Very good. Thanks. And Diraj, Joda and I plan to collaborate on a blog post that we'll po we hope to submit for, for review before Monday morning uh, UTC uh, so that it could be reviewed, hopefully published Monday or Tuesday in time for the weekly release. 2.307. Um, any, anything else on the Java 11 transition? Okay, next topic then was articles due August 20th for the a Jenkins interoperability newsletter from CDF. And I plan to write an article on my experience dealing with ARM processors. Um, Tim, I believe you'd submitted a draft for review. 
Uh, you have submitted a separate draft for um, uh, it's like pipeline visualization um, with the pipeline graph view plugin. Yeah, which by the way, I'm using more and more. Thank you very much. I can't tell you how grateful I am. It works. It's it's delightful. I assume you want uh, surprises or issue reports into the GitHub repository as is, as GitHub issues with pictures and ways to duplicate the the, the differences. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Great, thank you. All right, and then we I've I've sent a poll trying to find a time when we could have a, an agents overview session with Oleg Nanashev. Unfortunately, there are no matching times to fit my poll. So the poll is invalid. Uh, I will, um, Oleg will share times that he's available based on his, his vacation schedule and his family schedule. And we'll, we'll look for it in the future. So the, the, I think it's a good idea to have that discussion, but my proposal proposed times for the poll just didn't work in the poll just didn't work. Sure. So there was on the Docker agents, there was one thing that Damien suggested was that maybe we think about um, merging some of the repositories because we've got quite a lot of repos and with Docker bake, we can kind of build them all together, especially the ones that build off of agent base so we can build the agent first and once that's built um we can build the other ones on top i think it's i think inbound agent is the one that builds off it or ssh what put it inbound agent i think and and i like that i think i think the intent there was discussion in the in one of the mailing lists but i think that's exactly the right thing to do because it gives us one more opportunity to accelerate those Docker builds and make them consistent. Uh, it, it would be a nice topic for this over agents overview session with Oleg to understand if he, he identifies some reason why we should not do that. Excellent, thanks. Any other topics related to, to platforms or things that we should be discussing today? So um, I joined this meeting, I think because like one or two weeks ago, I requested that the Docker build be sped up um, because uh, with the many image variants, I uh, spend a long time waiting and then Tim informed me that this has already happened. So uh, because so I saw the uh, meeting note, meeting invitation earlier, and I thought, well, that's a good opportunity for me to join. And thank you for making the Docker build faster because waiting for that is always really painful while I'm trying to deliver security fixes. This hasn't really been relevant in the last one or two months, but it will uh, surely come up again soon. So thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, so the a lot, the, the main waiting time is just on the, is on the Windows publishing, um, and that's because the Windows base image is very it's one large, and Windows Docker is small to pull. Um, I removed the prone on the um, controller publish which means that it that goes a lot quicker now um, if the agent it runs on has it cached. Um, so if you, if you if for whatever reason you're running multiple builds, it's a lot quicker. We were seeing um, all the scheduled builds that were just kicking off were uh, every single one of those was taking 20 minutes and we we're wasting quite a lot of compute. Um, and that went down to three seconds if the agent was still around. Um, but I mean, the main, the main fix to the speed is to introduce staging and promotion. Um, if, if security fixes an issue, sh shouldn't really have to be waiting, should just be a button click. I agree. Still, it's a nice improvement over before uh, when I regularly had to wait 40, 50 minutes. So um, as I said, yeah. thank you for your uh, work there. Of course, if you want to make it even better, I'm not complaining, but um, it's a nice improvement already. Yeah, I mean, switching 
six, whatever it was, five or six different variants to building at the same time rather than one by one, it's going to make a massive difference. And, and, and it did. We had a, Daniel, thanks for highlighting it. Actually, last week or two weeks ago, Damien shared a, uh, an overview for us and we captured some of the choices in terms of why, why Bake is using HCL and why, how that helps and how, how the parallel testing helps and parallel image building helps. And this, was, this is quite an amazing contribution from Tim and from Damien. Thanks, Tim, very much for what you did. And, and thanks to Damien as well. We get faster tests, faster builds. And now truly Windows, as far as I can tell, is the, the prime bottleneck. And then Tim, I think staging and promotion is a pretty big shift, right? That's a, that's a, a notion of a, a completely different concept than is currently used in those scripts. Mm. Well, not, I mean, those scripts just care about a repository and credentials. So you can point it to whatever repository you want. Ah, it? okay. So, so, so conceptually, a, we can use the scripts to do the staging and promotion implementation when we're ready. Yeah, and the scripts are massively simplified now. I, I ripped out most of the code from the scripts um, as part of Bake um, because all of that is encoded in declarative file now rather than shell scripting. Um, especially that was nice in Docker agent because I, I couldn't read that shell script. It was insane. <laughs> um, Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very, very much. Yeah. The, the other fix that we did was I found that the um, tests weren't actually running on CI on the agent repository. It had been, there were tests in the repo, but they weren't run. And the tests actually failed when there was a Arch Linux image was added recently and the tests weren't running and the tests were now failing since then. So Damien and I had the fun of fixing those. Yeah, now part of me still wonders on Arch Linux. That's a different topic, I think. Yeah, so, I'm not sure if that should have been merged. But. That's a relatively obscure, at least to me, that's an obscure Linux variant. Yeah, the reasoning given was something along the lines of being able to get as the rolling release and being able to get updates quicker. but. Yeah, I mean, there's not so many variants on the agents that's not such a big deal. Right. But. Okay. So um, regarding that, and I mean, I want I joined to say thank you. So I'm kind of changing course here, mm -hmm. but um, the the problem a problem we have uh, is is the image maintenance, right? Because uh, people, I I noticed that because people send uh, various security scans they do about outdated images um, and send it to the Jenkins security team and now we and then we need to handle them and from my admittedly very biased point of view uh, it would be uh, much preferable if we provided very few images or variants of images that we deem to be the best way to run Jenkins, um, best practices or whatever, you know, um, whatever it is, um, and tell people, well, if you want to do something else, you can always build your own images um, that are custom made just for you. And from my point of view, this would make it much easier for us to stay up to date with um, base images um, and various package related security fixes and all of that, rather than having to adjust a dozen different uh, variants uh, all the time uh, and keeping them updated. <clears throat> yeah, and, and I think we've, we've at least got a rudimentary beginning of that. So the Java 11 changes we'll stop uh, publishing the CentOS tag, right? Because CentOS 8 is effectively dead. And it will stop publishing the stretch tag on the agents because stretch is, Debian stretch is switched into its long-term support mode and even that ends relatively soon. 
Now there's yeah. more work uh, to do there, Daniel, much more, I uh, agree. The, the, right, and I mean, th those are kind of low hanging fruit. Um, the problem is there are so many Linux distributions that are actually actively maintained and are reasonable choices and everyone has their favorite Linux distro. And so they submit a new variant for Jenkins because that's the one distro they're using. And um, I don't really see the point of doing that. Again, I am very biased because I'm the one that receives the report, says your package is outdated and then there are security vulnerabilities in the package nobody's even using. Um, yeah. But it would make the image maintenance easier, especially given that we're historically at least not been great with um, con continued maintenance without interruptions because, you know, people lose interest, move on to a different project, and then suddenly, you know, something that should be maintained uh, isn't. And you cannot fault the people for um, losing interest, um, but it does not look good, in my opinion, for the project overall. Yeah, I don't really understand why we need so many different choices. The, the only thing I can see is it should be a, there should be a reason why we need that. So like my architecture isn't supported on 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 it, or it runs, or this this image is so much smaller, and we should recommend it as the default or some other reason, not just, this is my favorite distribution. That's basically it. And, and I mean, the, the, my favorite distribution, there is one way to phrase it that almost seems reasonable. And that is, it's my uh, information security team's re uh, requirement, which is just business speak for, this is my favorite distribution. Um, but why make this a problem of the project, right? Because everything they upstream suddenly becomes our problem. And so maybe, maybe it makes sense for us to consider a more opinionated approach there saying, we provide the image that we feel is the correct one. Um, and if you prefer a different one, you're free to roll your own. Again, uh, just my perspective as someone who admittedly doesn't care at all about the underlying system because it really doesn't matter to me um but perhaps something to consider that's i i think that makes sense um in terms of if we were to take that approach it seems like we would need to do a at least an announcement saying hey we're intentionally so conceptually let's let's take this what if we said all right we're going to stop supporting Alpine and stop supporting CentOS 7 and stop supporting Debian 10, switching only to Debian 11 um, or some, some mix of those. It, there are certainly, there will certainly be noise in the community. We can't unpush those tags, but they would just stop getting updates, right? Similar to what we're doing with these low hanging fruit here. So that could be a March 2022 LTS. Oh, go ahead, Daniel. I think it's uh, too early to talk about implementation detail when uh -huh. so far it's been the three of us. Uh, it was just, you know, something that recently went through my mind when I don't even know what it was. I think at, at the time I was thinking about build times, I also saw a Twitter thread about what it means for someone to do a pull request or request a feature be added because that implicitly says, yeah, this is now your responsibility to keep this working rather than, you know, my problem in working with your tool. And that sort of resonated. Um, now, um, most of what I've been saying applies specifically to controller images. Here's the thing, we don't want builds to run on the controller in the first place. So uh, you shouldn't, probably shouldn't even use your package manager all that much because you don't need to install other tools because you're supposed to run on agents. So uh, I, I see a use case for a greater variety of agent images. Uh, 
to a certain degree that I don't see for controller images. So what I've been saying applies more for controller images than for agent images, but uh, can certainly to some degree apply there as well. The interesting thing there is that we have a much, we have a smaller variety of agent images as at least on the default ones. Yeah, much smaller, right? It's like Debian and Alpine yeah. and now Arch. What, and and then and then the other ones are just Debian and Alpine, I think. Right. It, it really is and, only. I, I don't even Windows. think we've got UBI in the agent images yet, right? So it's just no. Debian and Alpine. Yeah. The problem is, I think uh, that a lot of people actually build on the controller, which is a horrifyingly bad idea. <laughs> uh, but you know, the default way we deliver Jenkins makes this uh, too easy to do. And if you look at the usage stats, the vast majority of Jenkins instances have been executed to executors, which are very likely the ones configured by default for the uh, built-in node. So obviously we've, we've done things like the admin monitor to recommend doing this otherwise. And we've updated the documentation to explain exactly why this is a bad idea. But uh, this might be just, you know, people actually building on the controller. And I cannot think of a different reason to install Git LFS by default on the controller, which we do. So that would also be one of those things. If do we actually need Git LFS installed by def default on the controller? If you actually implement our best practices and do all of the actual building on agents. I don't know, but if it is not necessary, then we should not install it. Yeah. The problem with yeah. that though um, is that the, the default one in, in the repositories is broken. Um, uh, it, or it doesn't include newer features that get users or something. So if people download the default one from the repositories, it doesn't work. So we install a, the working version. Oh, and right. and is, because, uh, because of multi-branch, we we multi-branch having repository on the controller. I think we have to have, I'd have to double check, but I thought we had to have LFS there. But, but your point is valid and it applies to LFS and many other tooling mm. choices, right? There are several other tools like that where we ought to evaluate. Right, that's, that's what I'm saying. If, it, if, if you implement the best practices, uh, and you don't need it, we should not deliver it because that sends the signal, yeah, just, you know, do whatever. Um, and while we're at it, I think some of the uh, packages grant other user accounts read access on the Jenkins home directory uh, because that's a convenient way for people to uh, do something like copy artifact plugin does, which is also not a great default choice i i but i don't want to completely hijack this meeting so mm. uh, this is a bit more than than uh, i actually wanted to say uh it's just maybe something to consider for the future um that if we as the project have certain best practices established then we should that should also be reflected in the defaults that we ship right good good point that, that's that could be presented as the logical extension of, um, yes, we're warning you not to have, not to run agents or not to run builds on the controller. Now we're going to remove tools from the controller because they're not needed for the controller itself. And if you say you need Maven, we say, no, you don't, not on the controller. You say, oh, I need, and your example, get LFS. If we can find a way to confirm for ourselves that we don't have to have LFS on the controller, then we don't install it, yeah. Excellent, thanks, Daniel. Any other discussion there or topics we need to bring to this session? Okay, then I think we're at the end of our session. Thanks very much, both of you. Uh, I'll upload a recording. I hope within the next two or three days, I'm badly behind on recording uploads. So refer to the meeting notes for now. Recording upload will eventually happen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark. So.